So we've introduced the product rule. Um, we looked at a few basic examples. We, uh, we went through the proof to understand why exactly the product rule works the way it does. Now we want to look at some more examples. Uh, so we saw an earlier one where um, it was fairly efficient to just kind of expand a product and then take the derivative term by term, although product rule was an option. Here we have one where, again, we're going to try it both ways. And because we have two trinomials being multiplied, of course, there's going to be a little bit more work if we want to do part A, you know, solving by expanding. So if we do want to expand, well, we're going to use, it's just, you know, people memorize this FOIL rule, right? But FOIL is just a special case of distributive property. And distributive property says you can multiply term by term. So we'll do first for the x squared, right? So x squared times 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, 3x times 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, plus 1 times 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And now we distribute again through the second um, set of brackets. So we have x squared times 2x squared, so 2x to the 4 minus 3x cubed plus x squared plus 6x cubed minus 9x squared plus 3x plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And we should probably group like terms before we take the derivative. So we have 2x to the 4. Uh, 6 minus 3 gives us 3x cubed. Okay. Um, 2x squared plus another x squared. 3x squared minus 9 gives us minus 6x squared. Okay. Uh, minus 3x plus 3x, those actually cancel out. And then we have plus 1. All right. Having, uh, having done the expansion, we can take the derivative term by term. y prime is going to be 2 times the derivative of x to the 4, which is 4x cubed, plus 3 times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, minus 6 times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x plus 1, right? The derivative of any constant is 0. Okay? So again, here I've used the, the sum rule and the constant multiple rule, right? Remember that the constant multiples just stay put, and then you take the derivative of the functions that are being multiplied by those constants. Finally, we do a bit of simplifying. 8x cubed plus 9x squared minus 12x, and we're done. Okay, so not so bad, but definitely more work than the last time where we expanded algebraically. Now let's look at what happens if we use the product rule. Um, so of course here we don't have to do any preliminary work because we've, we've already got our product. We can go straight to the derivative. So y prime is going to be the derivative of that first quadratic, x squared plus 3x plus 1 times the second, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And then the first times the derivative of the second. Okay? And now we carry out those derivatives. So y prime is going to be, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3x is simply 3. And the derivative of 1 is 0. It's a constant. 2x plus 3 multiplied by 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, plus our second term, x squared plus 3x plus 1. Derivative of 2x squared is going to be 2x times 2, so 4x minus 3. Okay, and if you were dealing with a problem where the the problem simply said, find y prime, take the derivative, didn't say anything else. At this point, you're done, right? 
Once, once you don't see any DDX or anything like that in there, there's no derivatives left to take. You've done the derivative. You're finished. Any remaining work is just algebra. It's not part of the derivative process. So you can probably stop here. There will be situations where you might have to expand and simplify. For example, um, later on, we'll always want to know where derivatives are equal to zero. This is going to be an essential part of, of finding uh, maximum and minimum values and curve sketching. But you could leave it at this. Uh, if you wanted to make sure, of course, that this answer is the same as the one we had over there, right? so that product rule is indeed telling the truth, well, then I guess we could, we could multiply things out and see what we get. So if we multiply everything in here by 2x, uh, 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x, now multiply by 3, 6x squared minus 9x plus 3. Now we'll do this one. We have um, 4x cubed minus 3 x squared, multiplying through the x squared. Now we multiply the 3x, 12x squared, minus 9x. Finally, the 1, plus 4x, minus 3. And we combine terms. 4x cubed plus 4x cubed gives me 8x cubed. x squared, let's see. Minus 6 plus 6. Those are going to cancel. Um, and then I have a minus 3x squared. Are we uh, so far so good? Uh-oh, we're not. Tells me I might have made a mistake here. Let's see. Or I made a mistake there. Where do we think we made the mistake? Let's find out. <coughs> OK. Minus 6x squared. All right. 4x squared. We got that one, uh, plus 6. Did I just lose it? Oh, wait, 12. Ha, ha, ha. 12x squared minus 3x squared <coughs> gives me 9x squared. There we go. I just missed this term. 9x squared minus 9x minus 9x plus 4 plus 2 uh, minus 12. Same as over there. And 3 minus 3 cancels out, so we get the same answer as before. <coughs>